Welcome to the Monday, November 5th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let staff and members introduce themselves. Hannah Smith. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. Seth Mitchell. Benjamin Cheney. Unless anybody has anything else to offer ahead of time, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move it. Second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. And we'll move straight to the first application for 100 State Street. Continued. Come forward and show us what you've done in the, since we last met. I think one thing we should say is that we're done at 7 o'clock uh, because the development review board meeting starts at 7 and they had a very large Sorry. agenda. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, we're going to try to move through this. Move one to as quickly as we can. I'll go as quickly as I can. I'm, I'm going to give you these. I also have this stuff on a thumb drive. But, um, I, I have to ask if I can get them back at the end of the meeting so I can use them at the next board because okay. we were having trouble with our printer today at work. So I've got one more. Does everybody have one? We can share this. If there's any extras, we can always put one up. Um, and I, I, I can put this stuff up on the thumb drive if you think it's important. Um, but essentially, we had two charges. I, I think coming out of this meeting, we wanted to talk about the railings and the detailing of those railings. And we, were, and we spent a bunch of time talking about wayfinding. Um, and so this first plan you see, L101, uh, is the site plan with the wayfinding elements added. And they've been shown um, here by the front exit to the garage, down here by the secondary exit to the garage. There's one here at the beginning of this ramp up to the bike path. And then, uh, isn't there a fourth one, James? Boardwalk? Yeah, there's one on the boardwalk. And right. did you talk about that one there? Right yeah. there. So um, you'll see basically on the four corners of the building. So the idea for these signs was to jive with the signage uh, wayfinding thing that is already undergoing in Montpelier and to provide a seating opportunity at this sign so the next requested by the, you guys. So the next page shows the uh, elevation and plan of those, those elements, which will happen adjacent to all the major accesses to the job. Now, one thing we had asked for was a view looking from State Street back towards those entrances. Did you have something? We have the view from the top. From State looking Street down. back? Uh, we you we have were, one looking forward. We, back to we the ran back. out of time. Uh, we ran out of time to, to generate uh, another image. Um, I do have some updated images, um, but um, um, I have trouble figuring out which is these. It's a USB board. Sorry. Have, have you thought at all about the issue of yes. sort of designing these entrances? I looked at the one picture of the entrance that's uh, closest to the hotel in the alleyway, and the image that we had, I can't remember which one you showed me, Martin, but it virtually doesn't even look like there's an entrance there because there's trees planted in front of it or a pathway to it. There's trees planted in front of it, and it's just a square opening between the buildings, as far as I can tell. Do you have that image? I've got everything, so I'm sure I've got it here somewhere. Yeah. I'm sorry, can you point to where you were pointing? He was talking to the garage and the hotel. To the right oh. of the garage entry. Yes, it's the the one right in the front there. Yeah. This was the one we were looking at, Greg. Okay. Okay. I mean, he sort of. He, there's no way you'd know there's a passageway through there. Uh, that, yeah. that was my issue. So so, my thought process was how can we integrate this into the sign program that you're already implementing citywide. 
if if this were in that green space there, uh, where it's proposed, and you had this sticking up, that that's what we interpreted as the wayfinding. I I thought that there ought to be more than a sign. I think I said that several times. It's more than a sign issue. It's an issue of yep. making a, wel a welcoming entry that indicates you're going to the river graphically or some some way. All right. Well, I, this is what we had to offer. I'm sorry if I misunderstood your intention, Eric. Um, no, again, the, rather than block the view with landscaping, the idea was to frame it with landscaping so it drew you to it instead of hid the entrance, unless that was your intention. To hide well, it. this rendering is a couple of generations old. I think a lot has changed. You know, I mean, at this point, the buildings were a lot closer together. So, um, do, you, do you have in your uh, thumb drive and the, the most recent rendering of this view? Uh, no, I don't think so, Eric. I, um, we generated so much 3D content for this job. It's just that's the one I missed, I guess. But I don't, I don't have any different image than that to offer you. Are you imagining? I mean, are they of equal weight the walk between the buildings or the sort of? I think we, I personally, as a landscape architect, thought that the Haney lot was going to be our sort of main path down there. And as such, we have open to this sign and then another one and another one around. We figured that was enough. We were <gasps> trying to basically give wayfinding the seating opportunity that you asked for. I don't, I mean, it's difficult to stick an arch or something on a building. I guess I would agree that it feels to me like that's through the, the Heaney lot access. is the main access right. to the river more so uh, than yeah, I think between the hotel and the parking garage. garage. And the landscaping in front of it is part of the hotel planning. I don't know how. I think we also talked about building about its signage on that on the building on the corner and sort of announce that entrance as a possibility. Okay. Right, well, we put the seating thing there right in that location, thinking that would cover for that. I mean, that we were trying to, you know, bring people to the thing, but, you know, they are not looked out of place or didn't jive with your other signage. I mean, I... Well, uh, you know, I guess we're stuck because we, we interpreted this as sort of how do we integrate this into the broader pattern of what's happening around the city to make it make sense. And so we took that direction which, you know, had specific recommendations for certain kinds of things. The only thing we did was, in this particular case, is we added the seating element, which is seating elements that were already proposed for the, uh, for the boardwalk portion out back. Um, I think we've talked about that we're open to any kind of art in those, in, in that alleyway or anything that could make it seem more inviting. We definitely see it as a secondary route, but thought that the wayfinding would be enough and that seating opportunity would be sort of enough to draw your eye to it, especially from the hotel exit and entrance. This may be out of your uh, purview, but is there a wayfinding Oops. sign that's out on, on State Street? We're not sure exactly the location of all this. This is just basically a, a framework within that. But there is the, there's the tourist information kiosk yeah, at the other I end of the parking lot. Right there, yeah. uh, I, can't, I can't imagine there aren't going to be wayfinding signs on State Street. Yeah, especially you're right by that informational kiosk. Yeah, I, I think one of the, the things that's shown up about this is it blocks access to the river. Now, I don't necessarily believe that, but that's what people are commenting on uh, to me both personally and letters to the paper and uh, I believe one of the letters we got in our packet last time. Uh, and what I was really trying to do is open up so that, that you, it's really clear when you're going to the river and when you're going from the river to downtown if you're on the bike path. Yeah. I, I still feel that, that, that what James has proposed is, is is right in keeping with that. It's just it's out in the landscaping. It's yeah. not a building mounted feature. But we, you know, we took it on ourselves to sort of look at what else, what else you were doing yeah. and said we should be part of that. Um, I think integrating it into your master plan of signage seems 
like the right thing to do rather than creating some kind of a unique situation just at this area. I mean, I think the garage, the garage itself has about 30 feet of river frontage. Yes. It's really one Taylor Street has got most of the river frontage and Confluence Park on the other side of the railroad tracks. Well, it's access to the bike path. I know. Right. It's not just mm -hmm. the, which, the, which, you know, the access to the bike path. Mm -hmm. I think the deck is really a good idea because that gives it, people can sit there and look at the view of the river. Uh, that and But it's getting people knowing walking down State Street that, that there are two paths to the river here. Uh, it's, it, that's where I am, but uh, I'll shut up. Well, I'm not. I don't think you should feel like that. We're I mean, trying to work together to do this. Thing. We we took a stab at it, and we I guess we stabbed wrong. We, we had a problem with only having a week yeah. to come back yeah. to you is we didn't have a time the to keep it. Was just to position landscaping so that it draws you to it rather than hides it. Right. And, yeah. Again, well, the landscaping may not be representative, but that yeah. picture hides it. Well, I'm, I'm, and, and again, the idea is to have a if you're on State Street and you want to go in that direction, the idea is to have it draw you to it and not hide it again. Yeah. I just, I feel like that is very much a secondary way of getting down there. The idea is we bring people to down State Street to this tourist uh, informational location. They'd see that sign. That would direct them to the sign that's only, if, you know, right within eyeshot down the Haney Lane. That's the only way bikes will be going for the most part. We just felt that was enough, and the idea was to create these little points rather than some arch that was not in keeping with the signage program you guys already well, had We're not going. looking for an arch, just plantings so that it draws you. Right. right. I mean, what we've tried to do is frame this teeny ramp with the amount of area that we have left to make it inviting. We have a sign and a seating opportunity right at the base of that ramp. Okay. At the, the northeast corner of the garage, we have another sign again I shot it uh, you know visible from State Street and Frank I don't not necessarily believe in these signs I don't feel like they're the solution to the city of Montpelier but I do think if you're going to build a, yeah. a large building creating yeah. in the landscape and the architecture something that doesn't necessarily need the sign that encourages mm -hmm. and feels pleasant yeah. to gotcha. sort of say, hey, I want to go down there. There's a reason to go down there beyond this, yeah. these little signs. Can I? Understood, but our problem, okay. No, go ahead. Sorry, no, go I ahead. just, I've got the hotel landscaping mm -hmm. site plan, which That's wasn't part of this, this, right? <laughs> okay. Um, and it might be even something as simple as shifting the um, sumac. Oh, sorry. That is right here. That is sort of in the line, which I think is right. what people are seeing in this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so one tree. Yeah, no, no, no. You're totally to yeah. smaller. Absolutely. So that it's I not think that would be great. This, and then you have your yeah. bench here. Right. Um, so if you want to pass that around so they can this, see what yeah. I'm looking at, because so that, that would get rid of this right tree or make it lower yeah. so it's more shrubbery. I'm, I'm not trying to. No, I just no, wanted I, to make sure that people. I know that's in, for right. this application. That's kind of a new piece of evidence. But, but it, again, no, it's, it, a, it's a line of sight and an access. Right. Yeah. Right. It, so this, this should be open in here <coughs> to be able to walk straight through. Yeah. Well, so if this yeah. is gone mm -hmm. and instead you have something maybe bushy behind that seat and sign. Right. That's not really my job. But <laughs> no, no, no. I, <laughs> but I, I, I think it's we were, good. We, we, were, we were really just focused on, on this property right. and this application. I think that makes complete sense. And, and I know it's sort of outside, but in, yeah. in the DRB yeah. stage, we are I get it. I get it. changes to the hotel site, mm -hmm. to the garage, mm -hmm. where they impact, I'm trying to tell them also, where they impact the hotel site plan, we yeah. can make those adjustments if that seems to register right. with you guys as a something to throw in for a recommendation. Because you are allowed to make recommendations for landscaping under 24 VSA 4413, even though this is a public project. Yeah, I think that's absolutely a great idea. The likelihood of being able to see through the building as depicted in this rendering mm -hmm. is unlikely, correct? Right. Well, this is that's an older generation right. of, of drawings. So now you've got yeah. the screening. In there, right, right, we've got those scrims that we talked about at the last meeting. And again, the way the landscaping and the curbing enhances the entrance to the garage, it should be open in the same way yeah. to access the path between Cause, them. Because I mean, this one you don't even really see a sidewalk, but I think if you look at yeah. this, there's now more of a sidewalk yeah. that'll go all the way out. Yes. Because this is probably from the old. That's so that several sidewalk. generations yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah. Curb opening here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how do we how do we resolve this though? Because clearly we 
we yep. presented the wrong thing. I mean, we're. Yep. I mean, is this is this going to result in you asking us to come back yet again? No. Okay. We just. What we'll do is we make again. We are advisory. We will make a recommendation to the Development Review Board that the landscaping around that access be changed to invite it, you to that, okay. and then it be a curb opening so that there's a clear pathway through that landscaping to that pathway. Okay. Yeah, because I'm, you know, I'm sure the rest of the civil drawings and stuff reveal the, the handicap curb cuts and crosswalks and stuff. Um, if you look at the back of the package on C1.1, you can see where the crosswalk directs you over there, and it lines up on that. And we're and sort of talking last about. Page. One more. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, can right you can there. see how the yeah. pathway is set up. So <laughs> if, if you're amenable to uh, including a condition in your recommendations that we revise the landscaping and bring it back to Meredith prior to pulling a building permit or something, I think that would be. And describe your change in the fencing. That was one of the other items. So, also included in your package, this third sheet in the package I handed out is a is a uh, construction detail of the fencing, um, and you can see that uh, uh, this would be used for all of these types of purposes. So, this would plug the openings on the garage. This would line the uh, ramp, and it would also go along the drop off by the uh, railroad track. And this was selected because this is the design being used at Taylor Street, so we've got some correspondence with what's going on on the other side of the tracks, which is, I believe, what we talked about. Um, and James has uh, included some pictures of these where they've used them in other places. Um, uh, this is this is not a rendering of this project. It's, a, it's at, uh, I think that's over by the parking garage. It's a UVM, yeah. yeah. But um, gives you an idea of what it looks like in place. I think the material for the ramp also could be of galvanized and would be a nice composition to have the ramp and the handrail of the same material. Kind of ramp meaning the decking? The, no, the ramp up to the um, boardwalk, which would be the decking. Yeah, we have those added to the to the renderings, which I can put up on the, the big screen, but we'd have to... Uh, Here's the landscape architect for one tailor as well. Yeah. So you can see what that looks like in the rendering. Oh, make the trees. Awesome. Sure. And the, yeah, this this is also yes, you know we talked about adding a view that showed with the trees in place. So you see those uh, those river birch coming up from below, and I think the next one should be yeah. This is just a different view of the same thing, but um, with the trees in place. But I think the important thing for us was to just show this railing and this railing in situ in situ. No, that railing color is black that you're showing. I showed there. it as black, yeah, because we've been doing all the other metal work on the garage is black. Um, James has got it as galvanized uh, in the detail because that's what that's what yeah, he was recommending. Really. But we're you know we're open minded either is way. It possible to do it in black to match. Yeah, it could be done. Because the black shows the landscaping in a much nicer. Yeah, framework. I think so. It's a little less uh, um, visually prominent. Black it's disappears. Dark. Yeah, against yeah. the landscaping. Well, so, as the galvanized stands out, you see the fence instead of the landscaping. But one tailor is galvanized, galvanized I believe, yeah. So you'd see a sim <laughs> you'd see, well, you, back. you know, you'd see a similarity in shapes and stuff. I yeah. I don't necessarily have a problem with that except maybe, you know, if if uh, it'll be up to it'll be up to the railroad whether or not they get a, a fence on both sides of the tracks. They reserve the right to deal with that themselves, but we've indicated them. Um, that would be kind of funny if one side was black and one side was galvanized on either side. That's of the what railroad. I was thinking, <laughs> right? It's too bad because the black shows the landscaping much, mm -hmm. yeah, and much nicer. Yeah, I think fashion. there's other galvanized things on Gosson's building. That was the driving force for just yeah. the galvanized on that project. I think is the gal. I actually like the galvanized. As it ages, it models. It has a little bit more texture to it than something that's black. It's just sort of even. I feel like the the modeling. Do we know what this bridge is made out of? Is that galvanized? Is that concrete? The that the uh, the bike path bridge. Yes. I'm not sure. I th I th it. I think it's some kind of concrete, but I don't know. We have we had the civil engineering drawings, but we didn't have any engineering drawings for the bridge itself. I can make an argument either way for galvanized or black. 
And I'm flexible on that point. I, I think it either way could look good. Uh, <laughs> we obviously divided on the design team here a little bit. Um, yeah, I have no objection to it either. I, I, and the style is fine. I, you'll need to update your note, though, because you have one area saying galvanized and one saying stainless steel. Yeah, I think the stainless got beat up. So I'll take yeah, it. it's, yeah, it's definitely, yeah. It's definitely yeah. not going to happen here. <laughs> so... Some other fencing would definitely be galvanized. If you guys like it, that's fine with me. I personally prefer it galvanized too. But let's see. I have no objection to galvanized. I, I'm. I think black would probably fit in better with the rest of the garage. Yeah. A lot Maybe of fencing. just galvanized on the railing and the ramp, and then black, where it's actually a part of the garage. Yeah, that's that would work so for me. Out. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't really want to highlight that. I just need right. to have it there. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. There's some places under the bridge and stuff where we want to keep people from getting in there as well. So there'll be some yep. security fencing uh, underneath. No, nobody's designed a pedestrian bridge here, right? We have no design on it because the other ones in town are the. Uh, Galvanite or the uh, Cortan steel. Yeah. Uh, Galvanite. Oh, the, the, the bike path bridge. Yeah. I, like I said, we had a civil engineering plan for it. It, it, it could very well be that it looks yeah. different than this. I, I just wanted to be clear. My on my understanding is that that's. I mean, that got all permitted and done, and before I was even here. Yeah, yeah we won't be constructing right. that. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the steam tax plan is part of the one Taylor Street project. That was approved last year. But that's the way the bridge is going to look. I, I don't know. I don't know the specifics of Stantex plans. Okay. We need Tom or Corey to come up and. Yeah. That's where it is. That's how big it is. That's how long it is. That's what we know. Yeah, that's yeah. part of it. Is. But, but it's not a part of this application, so yeah, we don't have to deal with it, I don't think. No, we're just trying to integrate a little bit, mm -hmm. make sure that we're making decisions based on. All right. Okay. So on the ramp, you'll need a handrail, obviously. So yeah, and it's that handrail made of. It shows. Is it pipe? Galvanized as well, yeah. Yeah, it's so. On one of those photos. I yeah, you can, you can kind of see in the rendering if you zoom in that the, uh, the intermediate yeah, railings on the exactly. inside. Yeah, the rectangular section. Yeah, right through there, yeah. Greg, I have a mouse that's easier for you. Oh, thanks. And it's all hooked up. Keep forgetting that. So we're proposing galvanized on the level and black on the pitched. Is that? I think oh. uh, galvanized in the landscape and only black on the building. Yeah. Like where you have to have it on the base level yeah, to keep cars and people from going out at the opening of the base level where the water has to go in and out, or yeah. underneath the boardwalk to keep people yep. from going under the boardwalk. That was something that the yep. chief of police requested yep. after the October 30th meeting that under the boardwalk needed to be fenced off. I think that worked. That, that works for me. Yeah. Makes sense. I guess that way then the, the walkways won't disappear. Your people will be able to see those more but not pay attention to the other fencing that's not as people friendly. I want to get back to I guess what has become my pet peeve here. <laughs> okay. And getting, getting away uh, down uh, the you have a generic wayfinding sign, right? Uh, the uh, uh, I have some problems with the whole wayfinding plan, which is not appropriate to talk about here. <coughs> and I know that's being done by um, what's it? Okay. Okay. Alive. But the thing I really want to be clear about is that there are signs and graphics 
people don't have to wander around wondering where the river is. Good. And uh, I'm not sure uh, that's there uh, at this point. Uh, some of the the graphics for the uh, for the wayfinding sign just frankly confused me, and I know Mark Miller pretty well. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I've talked too much. <laughs> no, you make it. I think it wants to, as Eric has articulated, it just wants to be inviting, regardless of whether there's signs there or not. But yes. like, yeah. as you're walking down State Street, you want to be like, oh, hey, mm -hmm. that looks like an interesting thing. And I want to feel like I should and could walk through there mm -hmm. okay. and get to the river. And I don't need a little sign to tell me that. I mean, really, when you get right down to it off of State Street, that's really the only, uh, unless you go down to Taylor, I mean, you think about coming from Main Street up around the corner, there is no other access to the river other than from Main Street, which will be where the bike path goes through. You come around, and as you're going past Tulio's on State Street and you look down, it should be, you know, that's the first chance you have to get access to that back corner. Mm -hmm. So, again, right. just whatever it can be done to make that, again, inviting so that as you're walking by, you can look down and, and yeah. see that access. And again, between landscaping and something. Yeah. My recollection is there are no panels for murals on the State Street side. Those are all up okay. here. No, because the only <coughs> the only part other than the entrance facing State Street is, is going to be sort of behind the Christ Church apartment building. Right. And I'm not sure they necessarily want a 40-foot tall Marilyn Monroe looking in their window or something. Right. But I guess I was thinking more like if there was corner. a on that corner, the elevator corner here in there, if there was a spot for a mural, mm -hmm. that would feel inviting at that corner. Yeah. That might draw you to want to walk down that path a little bit more. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, those the wires that are going across the north branch on the other side of between uh, State and um, Langdon, you know, something like that between the two buildings, you were... I'm open to making that an art thing, or I have many. These are suggestions. I'm yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, perhaps the treatment of the pedestrian, the, the way the bikes are going to come down through the, the Haney lot could be painted with blue. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of things outside of the way the, the ground is painted. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. The way. All of those things. With the wayfinding scheme, there were certain like identified landmarks that they were pointing out was the bike path on there as one of the like is this sign going to say bike path this way oh yeah our sign would say exactly yeah, okay. river bike confluence park bike path boardwalk okay i don't think they've even gotten to this the wayfinding they, they hadn't they gotten to the point out. yet of yeah. figuring out exactly yeah, what things they were going to point to very, yet very generic so, i came yeah. to the presentation of the city council and the whole okay. wayfinding mm -hmm. thing is really generic it was very preliminary. Okay, I couldn't tell if they'd already decided which landmarks were going to be identified or not. Okay. My understanding is they hadn't. They had sort of a limited budget, but it's something where it... it okay. I'm sure that over time it could also be added to if need be, but it's also maybe a question for Bill if, or Sue if either of them know anything more. I don't know. No? Okay. <laughs> Again, once they finalize that project, it would be nice to have something that's, com you know, somewhat compatible. So at least if there's right. a sign up on State Street, you know, Absolutely. somewhere that says bike path yeah. or yes. walking yes. bike path or whatever it says, as you head down there, that it's clear that, you know, there yeah, is the Yeah, we're committed access. to, you know, having those <clears throat> signs with an eye shot of each other. Anybody else have any other questions, comments, suggestions? I've said too much already. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I want to be honest. I'm sitting here thinking about how I'm going to vote on this. I find it very difficult to sort of make a recommendation or vote if you don't know what you're going to get. And I, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> We can open it up to the public, but only very briefly, because we have a time limitation tonight. 
Um, we'll open that up for the next 10, no, 10 minutes or so. And then anybody who wants to have any further comment, this is moving on to the Development Review Board anyway. So again, we're advisory, so anybody who has any additional comments can bring that up at the Development Review Board meeting. So if anybody wants to speak up, uh, plan to do it briefly and uh, raise, raise your hand and come up to the I, mic. I think it would be good if people were restrict, restricted their comments to what design review has authority to review. So that, uh, if nobody has anything to offer, we can go ahead and move forward. We will run down, there were some, just to reiterate, there were some recommendations based from the last meeting. One was to have an option for the large artwork panels with a public contest for selection of actual artwork to be printed on the screens. Option one. Option one. Provided that the artwork on the scrim shall be muted black and gray tones in color, subtle, preferably echoing neighborhood themes like the railroad bridge, etc. Uh, cornices could be made out of GFRC or polymer composite material, but were to be colored to resemble the gray granite used elsewhere on the building. Decking for the boardwalk shall preferably be made from now. Originally, it was a locally sourced locust or ipe or another tropical hardwood, but again, you would like to use some galvanized decking, is that? No, I think the wood would remain wood. This would just be for the railings. Oh, okay. And the rim. And then use a smooth, not rough finish for granite portions of the garage. Rougher faces were more up to catch and hold dirt, increasing maintenance costs. <coughs> and then the last couple of recommendations were, again, changing the landscaping around the access between the proposed, the proposed hotel and the garage to invite access rather than hide the access. And again, open curbing as you're showing in your most recent sketch and then clarifying the fencing and railings at the rear of the garage would be galvanized metal or black colored metal material black against the building galvanized on the around the boardwalk area and then options bike racks could be provided on the boardwalk as well as inside the parking garage and number two uh, applicant could provide hardware for hanging temporary banners over the large artwork sections on the river side of the garage, uh, artwork or eyeballs below the cornice work or some other type of hardware so that any um, hanging banners could be attached. We'd stipulate to all of that. Have you ordered anything for the, I don't want to call it wayfinding, more than a signage issue, providing some directional guidance for pedestrians to the river. Did you, you said you were going to, you talked about. Well, they have, they have that in the most recent proposal that they gave us here. The location's I, there. I, I got to say, I am not satisfied, satisfied with that, nor clear is exactly what it's going to be. I mean, we, talk, we talked about removing trees and changing trees, but we don't have a plan for it. Is there a way you can write something that uh, uh, that we can send to the development review board saying this needs to be improved, or if people don't want to do that, that's fine. Can we do that, Meredith? Um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can write something more specific than what Stephen just said if you want. Um, you know, if everybody agrees that it's, I mean, we were talking about removing the, the sumac. Yeah. Specifically. Well, the sumac is low. It's the ginkgo. It's the tree that's in the way. Uh, the ginkgo, well, the ginkgo is on the other side. The ginkgo is between the church oh, okay. and the, I mean, the sumac is, the, from this it looked like the sumac, the sorry to get sort of buried in this. So the yeah, ginkgo no. is on the side towards, on the church parking lot side. That's not blocking the okay. access between the garage and the hotel. Okay. Um, so we can make it as an amendment to the. I think the land something that just says straight visual. Yeah. Uh, well, I've, I've seen other activity between State Street and that uh, that sidewalk. 
down, down in Boston, thing. there's a lot of, you know, especially along the Freedom Trail, they, they, you know, they buried a brick running down the middle of the sidewalk yeah. or whatever. So you've got a line to follow, you know, you go from your waypoint, yeah. yeah. wayfinding yeah. point, and, and it says to the river, and then you just, so, you, you, you almost so have to be stupid to lose it. Those aren't on the property that this, right. that, that's the issue, right. is it would have to be coordinated through right. Montpelier Alive, not right. by the applicant. But well, we're showing space to a, a, a yeah, incorporate so that on our property. I, I understand what Eric's looking for. I, I think we're just trying to find a way to articulate it, which is yeah. that the wayfinding thing needs to be more than than signage and moving the plants. Yeah. And we're, we're happy to stipulate to that. I, I just, I think we misread where you were going yeah. with that last time we saw you, and I'm sorry. How do you want to phrase that? I, I, I just think that, that uh, the uh, directions and guiding people to the river needs to be more than signage. Uh, I Maybe mean, some it's, paving I, treatment. It could be pavement. It could coming be, down through yeah. the Haney lot where the bike is, it, coming it, off it, of Stage Street. Doesn't, you know, I, I think there's a lot of different ways to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have a blue sidewalk going down right. to the river. Right. Right. You could do things like that. But uh, I, I just, uh, I think that really needs to happen. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, the, this, I think that you guys have done a great job of improving this over the times in the meeting. And, uh, uh, but I, 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 you know, I've been in strange cities, but where's the, you know, where's the river? There's a map shows the river running through town. Yeah. And you're in the hotel. Yeah, how do you get yeah, there? Right. You know, if you walk out of the hotel, you see a sign to the river or yeah. graphics that indicate a river. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we agree. We just want to incorporate it within the framework of greater Montpelier's. Yeah, and it's, it's path making, not place making. So, you know, I mean, yeah. linear elements would be fine, right? Need Call you guys it. to get on the Montpelier Live wayfinding team. <laughs> I think we need Eric on that. <laughs> I, I thought about joining that. But. Yeah, we're, we're amenable to incorporating this into the design. I just I don't want it to be the reason we stall out. Yeah, well, and this is so we can make this recommendation to the DRB. This is kind of outside of the scope of the 4413 limits on this, but it doesn't mean that they will, especially if everybody's in agreement on it, that it won't get folded in. I just, I'm not, not quite sure how, how that's going to go, but it doesn't mean you guys can't recommend it. It's not an unfriendly recommendation. We yeah. No, we love it. Exactly. We're that's, 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 that's what I'm, and that's what I'm saying. We're all about it. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. To and that's I'm just trying to be clear. Montpelier alive and get them to listen as well. Mm-hmm. And it also becomes a, a maintenance of it issue too. If it's something that's yeah. you know embedded into the sidewalk, things like that. For sure. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. Who knows what? This isn't something that. I think it would be lovely, though. You can think of stencils on the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. Do they put the stencils by the source and decay? That's it, no water. Yeah, yeah. goes to the river. That, that's fairly easy to yeah. renew every year. Something like that. I mean, I'm thinking places where I've been where they got these windy little paths between things, I'm like Boston Harbor. Yeah, down around the Constitution mm -hmm. or the City of London, you know, along the Thames. Mm -hmm. Just places where this fabric of the city pushes you off the river and you got to go around whole neighborhoods and come back and how do you get back to it I understand the goal I, I, I'm sorry we offered you less than a complete response I just said clear markings and signage compatible with the wayfinding proposals by my pillar alive to guide pedestrians and bicycles to the bike parking paths along the river need to be included yeah. Okay. So again, that leaves it open. But yeah, do you want to define it any further than that? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else anybody wants to add or bring up before we go through the criteria? 
Thank you. This is the small set of criteria that we are that are used to judge the projects uh, again on the design review criteria. Um, Number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district where it involves an historic structure, acceptable. Uh, harmony. Isn't, isn't that, that's, that just doesn't apply really, does it? It's new construction. It's new construction and preservation or, recon, or reconstruction. So you want to say it does not apply then? I, I mean, I. It's not reconstruction. It's not reconstruction. It's uh, it's new construction. I mean, it doesn't really make any difference in our final piece anyway. But okay, I'll just say not applicable then. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district acceptable. Yeah. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district. Those are compatible. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, acceptable. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. Recognition of <coughs> and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. And with the seven recommendations and the two options that are listed here and would be become part of that application, um, any other changes, recommendations, suggestions? Otherwise, all in favor of the application with those changes, raise your right hand. I was going to abstain, but I'll... <laughs> You uh, had to be more positive and courageous. Than <laughs> we won't let you down. That's uh, an apathy pill. Thank you, everybody, for Thank your you help and guidance through this. Yeah. It's, it's a much better project for, for having worked together with us. I appreciate it. I need somebody willing to put their signature on that. And yep. somebody as clear as I can make it for now. Signature of yep. applicant. That's good. Should that be one of you? Yeah. Thank you. Can I keep one set for my records so there's one folded into the DRC and I'll just use it at the next meeting? Yes. Awesome. I'm Thank sorry, you. we were having trouble with our no, printer. No, it's okay. Yeah. Was, yep, I handed it today. This looks like this is duplicative of the big one. It is. I okay. wasn't sure if Greg had yep. a chance to put it in. Mr. Chair. Hoping to make Thanks. more copies. Sure, if you can. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got the tools. Okay. Probably like five, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Greg, can I have my pen? Oh. Thank you. Jeez. Nope, I just, I leave it here. Okay. I'm the, next. the next application is for 79 to 85 Berry Street. Applicant Wood Belly Pizza. Come up and have a seat at the chair. Does somebody want to fold up the yep. I got it. laptop? Oh. Yeah, last time I did that, I didn't show I'm here to represent Jocelyn. Uh, she had some extenuating circumstances and wasn't okay. able to make it tonight and was wondering if you could table this until next week or next meeting. And we she would do that if you like. Great, and she would be in touch with you via email just to confirm with you. Perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, she sent me here just to make sure that. What was your name again? Greg Hesselton. Spell your last name H E S S E L T O N. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Next application is for 50 State Street, Salon Boutique. And I will can coordinate this, but I can't vote on it because it's in our building. <laughs> Go ahead. Know. Describe your sign. Oh, hold hi. On. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So Martha's here. So alternate should probably step down so Martha can step in. Okay. Okay. I 
I wasn't just, sure when she was going to officially yep. enter the. Yep. No, today today is her official oh, entrance, okay. so she can you can probably come up and you can everybody can sit here for this one because okay. you're. And uh, for the camera and for the public, I will let you introduce our new oh, okay. <laughs> member. So I, I do think the alternates should sit at the table and be part of the discussion. Yes. They just can't vote. Yes. Yeah. Hi there. How are, Although you? One, How are you? They can, somebody can vote well, because Steve has to sit out. Um, yes. But so. Hi, I'm Martha. Martha. I'm Martha Smirsky. This is my first time. So. Yep. Thanks so for having me. This <laughs> is our new regular d design review committee member. So that we are now full, full up with five regular and two alternates. <coughs> Good, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. And introduce yourself. I am Sharon White, and I am the manager of Salon Boutique at 50 State Street in Montpelier. I'm um, also standing in for Andrea Mixick, who could not be here this evening. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to begin. Do you need a copy of the application package? I do, because okay. I didn't get, you thank nope. you. No worries. I see your copy machine is so perverse at night setting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. have supposedly somebody's coming to do some work on it. Um, do you want to tell us? So, so summarize we, the project. Absolutely. So we, uh, at the end of July, moved to uh, from 40 State Street, where we had been 17 years or so, as uh, Salon Boutique, to 50 State Street, which was um, Vermont Trading Company space. And uh, we've been occupying that space very happily since uh, the end of July and uh, would need to have a sign above uh, the space outside as it was for Vermont Trading Company. And uh, the diagram and the outlines are there in the, the application. We would like to stay with our um, branding, which is the oval uh, with the eye uh, for Salam the Boutique and uh, feel that the current uh, diagram and depiction really speaks to our branding and is a nice fit for the space. Do you know how accurately this is represented, i.e., is this going to break this? Is this it is not going to break it. Break it's that? actually a, uh, uh, unfortunately, just a little bit of a, I don't know if I would say a miscue or it just wasn't aligned properly. The pictures. I assume it's going to go within the sign. Base. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, oh, yep. Sorry, And is it a brushed aluminum? It is a brushed aluminum. which is a bit different than what we have done in the past. Mm -hmm. However, with the expansion and the growth of uh, 17 years bringing us forward into a really uh, wonderful space and a, and a more current contemporary look, um, and, and if you've been to the new location, you would, would know by coming in that uh, the sign outside actually matches what we believe the interior message to be. So it's, it's very contemporary. Uh, it seems to fit the, the town um, dynamic and, and uh, view. And we're pretty pleased with the design itself. So is the lettering painted or what? So, though, hmm, without being the design person, that's kind of a difficult uh, question to answer, except that it's brushed aluminum and then etched and then actually um, outlined uh, with a black, a thin black line around the outside of the sign. So the aluminum is etched yes. at the letters. Yes. And then it's painted in. Absolutely. Uh, what are the little... Uh, those are indications of where the where it will be placed, um, how it will be placed. Mm 
Yeah, anchored. That's a good word. Yes. Or the appropriate word. Thank you. <laughs> and again, you said there would be a, a thin pinstripe around the Absolutely. perimeter. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. It wasn't showing on the diagram. I know, so I and I, we, we didn't get a revised diagram to, to show that, but actually it, it makes the sign itself stand out. Mm -hmm. Would that be black or the color of the... It would be black. Okay. I was just entering that here just to clarify it. Absolutely. And you're reusing the existing lighting that's in place? We are. In the email here, it says something about the brushed aluminum panel needs to project slightly above the soffit lower trail. You right, said, so that's what so we that's were just discussing with this this picture here. It's, it's got to it move up. up. It does. Okay, and it fits yes. within that with that, that scheme. Yes. Okay, it does. Okay. Scope. Any other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. 17 years at the old location with that very old wooden yeah. sign, yeah. and now we're looking to establish at least that plus more in a more contemporary fashion. Do you, uh, do you have a copy of the criteria for the uh, Or do we need? I don't usually bring just, extras. Just, just, um, Sorry. Preservation and reconstruction of an appropriate historic style. It's in the historic district. I would say that's acceptable. Okay. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. Acceptable. Uh, compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district. Acceptable. Since your sign has been in the district for a while. For a while, thank you. Yes. Compatibility on uh, compatibility of proposed landscaping with the district is not applicable. Prevention of use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, that's acceptable. Are you doing any lighting on it? Not additionally, no. Okay. Uh, location and appearance of all utilities would be not, not applicable. Uh, recognition of and respect for view corridors, uh, I would say that that's not applicable. Conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations, acceptable. I shall not obscure uh, sign Wait a minute, I'm missing one. Compati compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, uh, acceptable. So not obscure architectural details, acceptable. Illumination and terminally lit signs are prohibited. This is acceptable for that. Pennants and banners are prohibited except as public announcement. That's acceptable, but not applicable. Not, not applicable. applicable. Not applicable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the illumination is. Uh, our, um, well, there's existing. <coughs> and individual letters affixed or painted are very are encouraged. Huh? This is acceptable. Going out of order here a little bit. These things don't exactly line up. Yeah, we've got to do a major and, uh, sheets revision. Pennants and banners are not uh, uh, are prohibited. That's not applicable. I should sign it probably. Huh? <laughs> Get a vote on it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All in favor? 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any opposed? Yes, already done. And they need to have you sign. Okay. Just right above his name there. Okay. May I borrow this pen? Yes, <clears throat> please. There was a blue pen over there. I've got it. Oh, okay. I've awesome. Got it. Grateful, thank you. Thanks. Welcome to okay. Salam again. Uh, Come and see us. <laughs> Our office will be in touch with the final. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much. Have thank a wonderful you. evening. Could I have that? You certainly may. Thank you. Thank you for thank coming. You. The next applicant. Whoops. Whoops. Got everything. I do now. Okay. The next application is for 28 School Street. Applicant Maria Stauffer, pronounce your name. Stauffer. Stauffer, okay. Hi. 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 And describe your application. We are applying to enlarge our sign so it's the same size as the other businesses in the directory and add a sign to our front door. Your Mandy's bread, right? Yes. Yeah. So, I think that as we go through the design review regs, I think this is one of the things you ought to be able to do. Yep. I think it would be best changing. and read a little better to have this signs on an R actually black rather than or something other than this R. The gold. Because even just looking at this, it fades out. Say that down here, I don't know if your designer can look into that, but Absolutely. Just, it's just a recommendation. It just seems like it, it really drops out when it's competing yeah. against the white. The only thing that's not depicted is the black frame that will go around it so that they can hang the sign. Oh. So it's currently black on the green sign <laughs> that's the original, and it will be black on the, the new sign. Just a little more punch if you want to change yeah. that. Color. Some color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so on, the, on the door sign, is there any reason why we couldn't put that to the left of the door rather than on the door? We definitely can. Yeah. The space might not be the same size. Um, there are what might be columns built into the architecture on the front of the building mm -hmm. um, that might be half that size. But it could certainly run um, in a different fashion. Oh, oh, right. I don't know if you can yeah, see that in the picture. Um, but yes, absolutely. Everybody knows where Mangies is anyway. <laughs> well, the, the inter we that's why we're here. The interesting thing is that probably weekly someone is lured in by the smell, but they don't actually know we're there. Um, because the sign. Blend, the current sign blends in as um, you know a directory for a business that might not be a retail food service, and it doesn't have um, any of the pieces of the logo that appears on the bread label. So people really don't know we're there, yeah, I, I and we've been there for 38 years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Only <laughs> every every. Uh, School kid at Union School knows you're there for sure. Yeah. They do. <laughs> what is the sign under the 28? Oh, it's the business hours. Oh, okay. Yep. Of Maggie's? Yep. We are the only business that you find when you enter the front door. <laughs> Would you have enough room if you? Where this is the layout here, the day specials. If you could take the day specials, stack it above this, and have it a more of a rectangle, it might fit directly underneath your hours. Absolutely. 
Is that a possibility? Yeah, for sure. And then it wouldn't be on the, the doorway. So are you suggesting to remove the one that's there? No, leave, leave the one that's there. And well, instead of putting this on the door, it would, I think it would be more compatible to take the where it says today specials, just to take that portion of it, of the, the upper portion of the sign that says today specials, right. and stack that directly above your proposed sign, and then mount that directly underneath the store hours so everything okay. is on a column. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's just combine the, yeah, the one that's there is store hours, you said, right? Mm -hmm. It so is. So you, you wouldn't need that anymore, would you? Because no. you're, you're oh. duplicating it. Exactly. Well, because we, this yeah. one says Monday to Friday, 5 to 5. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, I think actually you could take, if, right? if there's no other information other than hours on that one, you could take that one down, yeah. move this yeah. over, and have it rectangular. Yeah, okay. for sure. Do you have a preference for I don't think so. I think that people, the, the interesting thing is when we put something on the door, when we were noticing that people didn't know where we were, the minute they could see the front door with some type of notification from the street, they could find us. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the yellow piece that's off on the right-hand side with our store hours is small, so you couldn't read it from the sidewalk. Um, so I think whether it was right on the door, if it was on the side, wouldn't matter, as long as it was large enough for someone to see. I think it would be more noticeable with, with the red yeah. above it. Oh, yeah. I think that certainly, I mean, from a, any distance, that red attracts your attention. Mm -hmm. And then if you, with this, this rectangular sign below that, um, again, what you're going to see is contrast. So if you've got a lighter color background and this sort of a yellowish off-white color that you have here with a black lettering on it, um, I think that I think the contrast will be more noticeable because I'm looking at this sign and it's hard to tell what it says, although it's much more clear with the one that's on the door, even as small as it is there. Mm -hmm. For sure. Assuming you're trying to get more foot traffic, this is a totally different idea, and you can completely ignore it. But it does seem to me like it would be pretty awesome to have just like bread sitting out there, you know, almost as like a. a <laughs> I'm thinking more like the Dog River Farm, sort of like honor system, like a couple loaves oh, of bread that yeah. you would pay, you know, that are just sort of like, oh, that's what's right there, that is the sign, is some actual like loaves of bread on a nice little table. Pedestal. If it weren't for the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah, point. But, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't mean, I actually mean like loaves wrapped up in plastic as like yeah, you know, squirrels. Squirrel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, um, they love the children <laughs> and they live yeah, yeah, yeah. in the bushes outside yeah, yeah. waiting yeah, for the crust. So I, I think it's a fabulous yeah, idea, <laughs> but. Yeah. Yeah. You've already got a market. We can't do it. <laughs> yeah. there, there we go. I'm totally amazed at the amount of bread you can turn out in that space. <laughs> now on today's specials, do you have them that you just stick something on there? We do, yes. Little little placards that we can change in and out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So again, if you do the sign vertically, you could put that either above or, or below the other sign. Yeah. Whichever you think is more readable. You could actually almost make two signs two rectangular signs vertically and then mount them one above or below the other, whichever one would yeah. make more sense. Yeah. Would, um, just throw this out and put a sign here. I mean, uh, across the, oh, across the top? And the hanging down. Yeah. So obscure the architecture. But, um, I don't know. What do you mean? What? Putting in like eyeballs uh, up there? Oh, oh, oh. Right here across the, the stretch thing. Now you can put your arms on, obviously. Right. I've never asked John about that, at least on his the front of his building. Again, one of the criteria was, you know, you'll, it'd have to be slim enough so it could, you're not, you don't want to hide any, any of the architectural details because right. that's a, a really special entryway there. Mm -hmm. Nobody else used that entry, do they? Um, the people that live in, in the building. There's three tenants upstairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think with the colors, with the, with the red 
and the colors on the, your proposed sign, I think that on that column on the right the door where the hours are now, I think that would I think that would certainly be noticeable. And protected from the weather. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have detachable parts to it. Yeah. It'd certainly be a lot easier rather than having them to get on the ladder to post your specials for the day <laughs> if it's hanging up off the right. right. And swinging in the wind. We'll give, we'll give your sister that job. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Another, I want to throw this one out. Okay, too. just no, go ahead. Um, you, you could put Maggie's bread right along this, this side stack. Scooting which, down the column. Which could be pretty cool. It's a neat idea, too. Yeah. yeah. Where? You could stack Mangi's bread right here mm -hmm. in bigger letters, which could be kind of cool. It certainly would advertise. Well. I don't yeah. have any problem with it being on the door. I, I see what you mean about it really drawing people to that door mm -hmm. yeah. and letting them know where you're at. Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> uh, if, if we're, I, I would have to. The other thing is, if we're, if we're talking about down this side, it's a different calculation. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have it on me right now. Uh, we start, if you start throwing things away at them and have to go back and do another two. sign on the building <laughs> calculation to make sure we can actually do that. But you can make the recommendation and we can do the calculations. Yeah. That would be nice. Now, the only thing with the sign on the door, I know it, it swings out, right? The door? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it still might get hammered by the kids, being that it's right at the door, yeah. right at their level. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we, we are completely comfortable having it in either place. And I think it's very easy to see um, I'm just saying on the, the side. Standpoint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would be your preference? I think that the side would work fine if that's what the agreement is. Um, I don't think we'd even considered another option, so that is just fine. actually voting on this one. What I did was I just said applicant has the option for a rectangular sign to be located in the, on the vertical casings on either side of the entry door using the same design components and colors currently proposed. Does that say what you would like? about the contrast as well, mm -hmm. the pinstripe contrast. Of the larger director's sign. sign. Mm -hmm. So again, the recommendation is for a darker pinstripe. And the, How would you want to letter it? Just a higher contrast as an option. So it leads better against the white.
I just said applicant has the option to use darker colored pinstripe lettering and logo on the larger ground sign in the same colors for improved readability. Does that say what you wanted to? Okay. Any other questions, comments, suggestions? I'll read through the criteria then. Number 1A, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed project is in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties, acceptable. Compatibility of pro proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change, and there's no lighting on the sign. Recognition of and respect for view corridors, not applicable at this location. Conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations, acceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details, acceptable. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs, not applicable here. Illumination, uh, internally lit, not applicable. Penance and banners, not applicable. Individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed with the options. Oh, Raise your hand. There's, there's too many people. Somebody has to sit out. I'll just say five. I know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not noting who's. The unless minutes, you, unless the you, the minutes unless note. Unless you need to, okay. The minutes note. Then they, you pick somebody who's dead, whose vote doesn't count. <laughs> oh, I mean, it, I mean, it would be Ben because he's the alternate. This is news to me, but that's Sorry. fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you want to sit in, I'll. I'll, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> And I need to get you to sign this one right there about my name. Overwhelming. And then in favor. The next development review board meeting would be. Uh, do you need to come to development review okay. board? This this is administrative. Sign okay. Approval. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Keep the good smells coming. Thank yes. You. <laughs> Move things along. Yeah. These are probably more or less maintenance kind of. Okay, for 22 Main Street. For Milton and John Beard's building, describe your application. Jay Ansel, Blackboard Design Architects, Tony Beard, owner, and Joan. Hi. Hello. Um, this is in relation to the rear fire escape on the building that has been in its deteriorating condition. And we had looked at options of replacement. There was an engineering report that indicated it really needed to be replaced that the cost to do that was really prohibitively expensive. We looked at several options, including a spiral, which was simpler and smaller, but we couldn't meet the uh, life safety requirements that the city was wanting there. Um, it was pointed out by Mr. Lumber, Chris Lumbra, that because of the sprinkling that had occurred recently here, and with the other exiting within the building, that they do not need this. And it could literally come off. So that's really what we were proposing to do, was be to take it off. So you've got an image of what it, what it is. Mm -hmm. And then we would be returning uh, these two locations where the doors were to windows. They'd be a, a Marvin uh, clad window in which we were sort of matching existing color of the other windows. Uh, and then doing a brick infill beneath the window to infill. Would that infill be inset? Uh, yes, that's what we were looking at. There are sort of theories of you know which to do there. Whether you tooth it in, do you do it in well, set? I'm assuming the doors are original. Seems that way. Yeah, but they're, they're certainly historic, and there's other precedents on the building where some have been infilled straight line, and that some have been toothed in. <laughs> I just think the inset looks good. 
better because you're never going to match the brick exactly right. anyway. And it tells the story. And I, in this case, replacing the doors, I, I wouldn't even think it would have to be brick. Well, but we saw that. Well, it should just be a panel. Yeah, just. I think it could be either. I don't know if you guys have any preference. It would certainly be cheaper. <laughs> um, and then we're pretty, this is just to show how we're matching the color of the, uh, with the clad and the existing window trim. Um, is it a double hung or is it Double hung. Okay. Yep, we'll basically be doing double hung as the others are. It will also be egress capable, although it doesn't need to be. So that's. And that would they be raised to the same level as the other windows, or would they be constructed below the upper panel? Uh, we'll, we'll take it to the same level so that the head will match. Okay. Mm -hmm. Basically, head and base will match. We're trying to match that line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the last page yeah. of the, the very last page. Yes. There are, <laughs> are granite sills beneath the others, but again, with this being the former door, we weren't. So that's kind of in a nutshell where it is. Yeah, that's why I think setting it back would be. Yeah. It's well, still fairly defined as an X door. Yeah. yeah. It might be simpler and cleaner in a way, yeah. That would be fine. Weather-wise, temperature. Well, I, or we might do, as on my next project, but because of rod issues, we're using some ball panels so that there isn't ever an issue that it's painted. I, if we were to go to a route of that nature, I would suggest that, so that it's maintenance-free. It's a composite. Yeah. So you want to give the option that you use the lower panel, either it can be a brick and fill or a composite panel? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Probably originally was a transmit motor door. Could be. Okay. Yeah. French block next door was, was yeah. Eric was doing the same thing where it's set back. Yeah. And with the wood you don't have to worry about matching color or yep. well it'll probably stand out less in a way. Yeah. Questions, comments, suggestions? So the, the panel will be flat panel, or you propose it? We'll do a flat panel. It would be flat. I would flat think panel. because of the size, we'd be flat, we probably would be trimmed around. Okay. And then the sill, the, the exterior sill? Be would be, I would think, uh, wood sill, basically. I don't think we're going to repeat the granite. What? Don't these units come with a well, there's a certain portion of sill that comes clad with it, yes. Right. Actually, I think you can maybe get some clad material to cover the sill, so that would totally match. We wouldn't be the same depth as the granites, but right. yeah, they would get out of the clad sill. I assume there's nothing proposed dealing nothing with Nothing changing any of that yeah. at this point, yeah. yeah. All the uh, previous anchor points, how are, how are you dealing with that? They would be filled, filled. Yeah. repaired. Some would have been in mortar, some in brick, probably. So again, the only thing we added was the infill below the two new windows, which are replacing the existing door openings, maybe brick or composite material. You want any other? Specificity other than that? You could mention the clad wrap sill if you, if you like. That'd be fine.
So we'll go through the criteria. Number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design of other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, not proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change in utilities or lighting oh. of any kind, not applicable. Recognition of and respect of view quarters in the back of the building, I would say that's not applicable. All in favor of the application with those options, raise your hand. Steve, where it says relocate cable box entry, that's not anything to do with utilities. Is that correct? No. It's on, the on the last page, there's an indication where they're going to relocate the cable box entry. It's right now. You'll see it in the photograph. It's above, and we're going to oh, put okay. it below, okay. which actually okay. will show less in a panel probably than in the brick. So okay. it's so really, I would tell that it's probably an insignificant change as far as utilities. I mean, it's an existing. Okay. So we're not adding. Yeah, you can anything. see it's here where it is now. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. So then it goes down. Yeah. Yeah. And one of you want to sign that? Probably my name on the, on the pen, pen sign. right here. And, yep, for that one. For all that. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stay for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll be quick. One. So, capital, capital, capital copy. Siding. Basically, this is also maintenance. Below this siding, down below, is basically rotting. And so we're looking to replace it. Actually, the project is going to do that. And what we're going to use, again, is a boil product. Uh, but this is called a nickel gap. Basically, it'll, it'll emulate the shrinkage cracks that are in the material there. So it'll look very much like okay. that now. Um, and it's a this totally inert material, and if you've ever seen it, we've soaked it for months in water, and it doesn't rot. We've often let it uh, used it, and the division is allowed down low where things typically deteriorate, and it just doesn't do it. That's a different profile. It will be again that nickel lap, which is kind of a ship lap, but with this thin crack. What is the material? It's a re it's a fly ash, basically, material. And some sort of a and a right. A bonding agent of some sort. That's the down so I don't have to uh, The color, it. the owner, we looked at having it be uniform with the rest of the building and the colors and the black windows and such, but they wanted to keep this sort of identity of themselves and with their uh, sign above. So it'll be matching, matching what's there. So again, it's just that lower. It's the lower part. The rest will be painted, but it's mm -hmm. only the lower part that gets replaced. Yes. Painted the, the same, same color. Same yeah. color? Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> unfaded. <laughs> yeah, I think what we'll do, I haven't found, I found close, but we'll take around an unfaded piece and get it scanned. There's actually a Sherwin Williams color that's pretty darn close to that called pancake syrup. Pancake syrup. I wouldn't put syrup that color on my pancakes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it shows up pretty nice, and it's sort of a, uh, a reddish, dark reddish brown color. Although this one here is passion ardente. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll run down through the criteria: preservation, reconstruction of the appropriate historic style, acceptable; harmony of exterior design, acceptable; compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable; compatibility of proposed landscaping, not proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. No change in utilities. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including reviews of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor, raise your hand. Meredith, I would say looking at this next application, it's similar that I feel like we would be able to get through it. You ready to get that. through it? Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah this was quickie. So. Thank you, Jake. Okay, thank you. Thank you for looking ahead, Ben. Thank you, 
Jay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And finally, the next application, 58 State Street, Overlake Park. Roof replacement. Hi, all. Hi. Uh, I'm Jesse Jacobs. I'm representing Overlake Park. Um, we have a new tenant that's moving into the 58 State Street garage, which after so many years we're really excited about. Um, we have found that the roof that is there currently, which is asphalt shingles, needs to be replaced. We are proposing to replace it with something that is more historically relevant, that will last longer, and generally, in my opinion, looks a lot better. And um, I'm here for your permission to do that. The pitch looks a little shallow for shingles as well, for asphalt shingles. So you, I'm you, fine with it particular color? Uh, it's charcoal gray and I think you guys are, should have the... I had left the material and the chip with the application. Oh. Maybe you don't have it. That's okay. That's, we, don't, we don't need it. It's that's a little bit, it's really a little bit, it's a little bit lighter than this laptop. Yes. No, that's fine. So are you having a mix of uh, guard and pad? We're gonna do, right, well, so we'll have the guard along the edge and then Four feet above that, we'll have the floor to leaves uh, just to kind of keep snow up there. Okay. I'm not sure if they investigated some, some of the uh, pad style guards that you're showing. L look at, there's some uh, websites that recommend the st stagger and spacing on those, mm -hmm. depending on the pitch of the roof. Uh, makes a big difference as far as how it controls the movement of the snow. Oh, okay, I'm sir, the, the, I'm fellow sure who, the, the fellow who is in, yep. installing this has a lot of experience, so I think that he probably will know what to do. Okay, good. Questions, comments? Fine. Okay. Evaluation number one, preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design, acceptable. Compatibility of professed exterior and materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. No landscaping proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities. No change in lighting or any other utilities. No. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house. Acceptable. All in favor of the application, raise your hand. Thank you all for squeezing me onto the agenda. I know it was a full one. Thank you That's for okay. We together. tried to rush through. <laughs> no problem. Let's sign that one. You're all set. Yeah. I'll move tabling amendments and adjournment. Adjournment. So here's a second. All in favor of tabling the amendments and adjourning. Raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>